Today I am going to cook some chicken leg quarters. There you go, now you can see them better. But before I do this, I want to talk to you somewhat briefly about food safety. Uh, it's really boring and all that, but please bear with me. I think it's important and I've talked to people in person. I've conversed with people on the internet, on forums, <clears throat> and at various other websites. And recently, there's been a couple of comments on my videos about you need to wash the chicken first before you cook it. And I get that from a lot of people, like I say, in person, on the internet, on forums, on other websites. People say, you need to wash chicken before you cook it. And I don't wash it off. The reason is, I try to uh, follow the USDA food safety guidelines as much as possible. There are a couple of exceptions, and I mention those in my videos, uh, particularly when it comes to ham, as one time I mentioned that in my videos, when I don't follow exactly what the USDA says. Uh, do I think the USDA is perfect? No. Do I think everything they say is the best way to go? No. But we do need uh, one set of standardized food safety guidelines. And because I make these videos and you people see them, I need to give you the best information I can. And that's why I support the USDA guidelines when it comes to handling food. That being said, <laughs> uh, and by the way, this applies to all meat. Uh, chicken, pork, beef, turkey, lamb, any kind of meat. Eggs as well. It's any animal product. Um, I'm not sure about fish, but I won't hurt to do it. <laughs> the reason you don't want to wash chicken yeah, let me let me back up here. It, it, it's when it comes to food safety. It's primarily when people talk about salmonella or E. coli or any other kind of uh, harmful bacteria that would be on the surface, the surface of the chicken or beef or pork or turkey or buffalo, whatever. It the the harmful bacteria can be on any meat, not just chicken, but any meat, any animal product, and so. The reason I don't wash it is because when you wash wash it off under running water, little water droplets splash everywhere, several feet away. They can fly 10, 12 feet away or even further. And they're so small you can't see them. And if, that, if there is any of that harmful bacteria in those water droplets that land on your, your silverware, your countertop, your plates, your glasses, your your spice bottles, uh, your salt and pepper shakers, anything that's within 10, 12 feet or even further from the sink, that E. coli in the water droplets can land there. And that's how people get sick. So do not wash the chicken off in the sink. If there is any harmful bacteria on the chicken, the beef, the pork, the turkey, whatever, when you cook it, that temperature, the hot temperature, will kill those dangerous bacteria. That's why I don't wash off chicken or any other meat. I know many people say, but my grand, my parents did it, my grandparents did it, so I do it. <laughs> Just because people do things for a long, long, long time doesn't mean that's the right way to do it. If, and I talk to people, they say, well, I ain't dead yet, so I'm not going to change. <laughs> Well, if you wait until it kills you, it's too late to change. Um, and I know some people, they're, they're going to keep washing chicken and beef anyway, in spite of what I say, in spite of what the USDA says. If you do that, please, please, please be very, very careful. Use very low water pressure and wipe down the counter with a bleach uh, towel or something to make sure it's sterilized and clean and safe for you. And wash your hands off too, by the way. Um, I'll try to show you what I do to be as safe as possible. And again, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not implying that I am. I'm human, I make mistakes. 
I do things wrong and I need to change things too. But when it comes to food safety, I try to be as close to perfect as I can and I try to uh, follow, like I say, the USDA guidelines when I do that. So, how do you do it and be safe? Well, I try to do the two-hand method as much as possible. There are going to be times when it just isn't going to work depending on how you want to cook the food. But generally, I, I, I will use the left hand, well, my left hand, no, I won't use yours because you're not here. <laughs> you can laugh later if you thought that was funny. I use my left hand to touch the chicken, the beef, the pork, whatever, and I use my right hand to hold the knife and I keep my right hand clean. So, what I do. Carefully open the package. And I use my left hand to remove any excess fat, uh, to do any trimming that needs to be trimmed, try to keep it from falling on the counter and everything. And uh, just just be be careful. It's not, you don't have to go crazy, but just, just be careful. But that's, that's how I do it. It's a little sloppy right now because I'm, I'm reaching over the counter so you can see easily. But that's how I, I do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish these up, trim them, get a little fat off, and then I'll cook them up. So stick around. And we're getting away from the talking so much and into the cooking now. Okay, I've carefully trimmed off the excess fat then off the chicken and it's ready to go and these are, are just chicken leg quarters that's the chicken leg and the thigh uh, that's what we call them here in the US in uh, I believe in Australia they call this chicken Maryland I don't know why they don't know why but that's what it's called apparently anyways I'm just gonna make this really super simple because they have pretty good flavor just like they are so I'm going to use a, uh, this is a store brand steak sauce. Uh, it's, it's decent. I like it uh, on chicken as well as beef. But on so I do things different in different flavors, different things. But I'm just going to put a little, little on here. You can use a barbecue sauce. Uh, you can use any kind of a sauce that you like that would be uh, something you would enjoy on chicken. Try different things. Uh, try combinations of things. Try a hot sauce. Try a sriracha, a mustard, barbecue sauce, sauce like I say, whatever. Put it on thick, put it on light, whatever you want. That's all right. <laughs> and then on top of that, this is a very common uh, seasoning sa salt. It's probably sold in every grocery store here in America. And just sprinkle a little on. And that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do the same thing on a grill or a smoker. Uh, you can do it in a crock pot if you want to. Uh, it's so easy, it's so versatile, but just whatever you like uh, to make so What is the safe temperature to bring the uh, chicken up to, the, the internal meat temperature? Well, according to the USDA, it's 160, or let me, let me be more clear, it's 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I've had a couple of casual conversations from a couple of guys who live in Australia, and they tell me that in Australia, they don't cook it that hot. <laughs> I think they cook it to about 140 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And they say that's what they do in Australia and they don't have any problems. If you want to, that's fine. <sighs> but I'm going to go ahead and stay with 165. Now, I do know there are a lot of people that will cook these to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, the internal temperature, because they because they want to. 
I don't understand why they do it, but they do, and that's okay. People are different. People like different things. Uh, cook it the way you like it, but I, I encourage you, please try different things. Cook it a little differently. Try some different flavors, some different things. Uh, you might be surprised what you like. So I'm going to do these to 165, and I'm going to use the temperature probe hooked up to a uh, little thermometer and I'll monitor the temperature and when it hits 165 they'll be ready to go. So I think I'll put it, this one looks like it's the thickest so I'm going to try to put it so that the tip of this point is in the middle of the meat but be sure to avoid hitting the bone. If you feel it hit the bone moving around so it's not touching the bone uh, you might get a false reading if it hits the bone. Um, speaking of the bone there it goes. It's, it's been said for many, 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 many years that if you want to know if your cooked chicken is cooked properly, uh, when you cook it, slight cut into it, and if the juices run clear, that means it's safe to eat and it's cooked properly. That is false. Your grandparents told you that, your parents told you that, and that's not true. The juices can run clear and it can still be not cooked to a safe temperature. Uh, another thing people experience when they cook chicken and they cut into it, and they see pink, especially along the bone. And I've seen them, I've, I've literally seen people freak out and throw it down and say, that's not cooked, I'm not going to eat it. Visually looking at chicken and seeing pink in there, that's not... A, that's not a good way to determine if it's been cooked properly. It could be cooked to 200 degrees and you can still find pink in there because it's normal for those, especially in younger chickens. Uh, right next to the bone, often there'll be pink areas. It's from the meat, it's, it's in the, from the, the moisture. I'm not gonna get to the technical aspect of it. It's known as myglobin. Uh, it occurs in meat. Um, it's, I don't think it would help to try to go into all the technical aspects and explain it, but the, the only way that is 100% safe to cook chicken and any other meat is using a thermometer to check the internal temperature. Ah, that being said, <laughs> I need to mention one more thing. When it comes to E. coli or salmonella or any other harmful bacteria, it's on the surface of the chicken. When you, if you're gonna marinate the chicken or if you go to a temperature probe like I did, if there was some harmful bacteria on the surface of the chicken, it's now inside the chicken because it penetrated the chicken with the uh, temperature probe here. So in this case, it's gonna be cooked to 165, so there's no harmful bacteria that's gonna survive. If you, in the cases like if you're making ground chicken for sausage or if you want to make a ground up chicken meat hamburger uh, or a burger, I guess you would call it, you need to cook that to 165 uh, to be safe. Just a little, little extra temperature there because on ground meat, if there is any harmful bacteria, when you grind the meat, it's all mixed up and so it could be in the middle of the, of the ground up meat. So cook it, ground it meat to a higher temperature just to be safe. Uh, one, well, 165 is fine. Uh, for instance, I hope you're not getting bored. I know you are. <laughs> Last time, uh, beef. I love medium rare steaks. That's about 130 degrees is about where I like it. So that's about 35 degrees below 165, obviously. Uh, is there any risk there? There's probably a little tiny risk eating meat cooked at that temperature on beef. But it's such a tiny, tiny, tiny little risk and I love the flavor. I don't like it medium well or well done. Um, but it's a steak, so it's different than ground of meat. Anyways, this is ready to go. I'm getting hungry. And this is going to go in the oven now. And it won't be very long and these are going to be nice and delicious. So stick around. The boring commentary is over, I hope, <laughs> and I'll see you in a couple seconds. Well, it's coming along just fine. It's not ready yet, 
but I wanted to put some more uh, some more sauce on here. And I got a little more sauce on them now and put them back in the uh, back in the oven. Just a little touch more. Don't put too much seasoning salt on it or you'll you'll be eating a block of salt. <laughs> Just a little bit. And back they go. Looking pretty good. It's at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just need to let it rest a little bit now before I eat some. But it's looking mighty good, don't you think? I think so. It's going to taste even better. Hang on. I'll give you a taste test here in just a minute. There we go. A couple of nice looking chicken leg quarters there. They took about 55 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think they look pretty good. I know they taste pretty good. Because I make them this way every, every once cut in a while. piece off here for you. And uh, show you what it looks like inside. Here we go. Yeah, that's it's actually 167 degrees in there and you'll see a little pinkish color here in the center that is fine that is perfectly cooked to a proper safe temperature as per the USDA recommended guidelines because you can't always rely see it's different colors of mink there of mink it's not mink it's a meat you can see the different colors of the meat there. It looks pink, but after a few seconds, it changes darker to a darker color of the meat. Uh, it's, it's perfectly safe. It's very tasty, very juicy, very tender. Super juicy, super tender, really flavorful. Give it a try. It's so easy to do. This is just a real simple, super simple method. Uh, just a little flavor, a little sauce, a little seasoning, cook them. Real basic, real simple, but very delicious. Give it a try. I'm sure you'll like it. Cook safely with all meats, not just chicken. And it will definitely be cooking gobble good. We'll see you next time on Cooking Gobble Videos. Mm, very juicy.